So what do you think's changed then for Arsenal that they've been able to get these two wins that they have? What's gone right for them, Yanish, in these last two games? I think the players that maybe they didn't anticipate playing well are playing well. Um, uh, young Jakub Kivior came in with Chelsea. Uh, that was his first start um, uh, today. Again, in, in a hostile environment, he showed that he can play very, very simple within himself. That's exactly what you needed to do. He didn't stand out. I mean, I, I cover him uh, extensively with the Polish national team. Uh, and, and I know that he was he just wanted to make sure that he doesn't make any, uh, any mistakes. The next level for him is obviously to maybe you know come out of the back with the ball and, and maybe look for penetrative passes out of it he didn't do that and fair play to him uh, and you could almost see that Gabriel a lot of times didn't want to put him in trouble under unnecessary pr pressure so that's important uh, probably the most important thing is Jorginho because he's a facilitator okay you and I have talked about right uh, Declan Rice and we'll get to him a little bit later because he was magnificent once again but we felt that uh, Thomas Partey is not that and Jorginho was a facilitator. Very important one today because Arsenal are not used to playing like uh, like they were playing today, right? They were playing on the counter. They had difficulties with the press early on. Uh, uh, Jorginho was there to bail everybody out. He was always available for those little passes to get his teammates out of trouble or out of pressure as well. So, you know, you have a facilitator. And most importantly, I think, after what I would call – uh, maybe not as good of uh, form, uh, uh, their captain, their leader, if you will, to a degree, uh, uh, Martin Odegaard. Uh, I mean, he was so important. I mean, two goals against Chelsea, a goal here. Uh, if Jorginho is a facilitator, he certainly, Martin Odegaard, is a playmaker. And he showed that uh, in these last two games that were super important because otherwise we're not having this conversation. Looks as though they're up for the fight, though, to see this out, at least to do their part in it, Yanish. You know, Mikel Arteta said before this game, he used what happened last season against Newcastle as a motivation. He sent them out to get revenge. It's where really the season came apart for them in that final run in last year. Obviously, different things at stake this time around. There's a title on the line. There's a title that they still could secure at the end of the season. Do you think they're going to do their part for the rest of the way? I think they may, but I think I think Manchester City are going to do their part as well. I mean, obviously, three games, uh, Brighton home, uh, Forest away, and Wolves. Uh, you would have to imagine, as I've said, uh, that they get the points. But remember, I just said where they lost the points and the big games against Chelsea's and, and, and Newcastle, it seems to me they get uh, uh, much more motivated for that. So, I mean, if they can keep the intensity, uh, sort of belief to continue to pressure Manchester City, I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, a, a, you know, I just think that I'm not going to change that. At this moment, at this moment, uh, Manchester City, uh, are, you know, they have been my, my favorites for a long, long time, as you know. Um, and, and I still don't see it. But that doesn't mean the season is going to be terrible, right? I mean, for Arsenal, I think this is going to pay dividends uh, um, for, for, for a long time. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.